Hi, and welcome to WordCamp Santa Clarita 2021. My name is Nico. Um, I am one of the organizers of the Long Beach chapter of the Los Angeles WordPress Meetup. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here today. Um, you're listening to the 9 a.m. talk with Magic Pomowski at the Colossus Track. Um, be, please feel free to add your questions to the YouTube chat feed. We'll answer those at the end. We'll have a Q&A session. Uh, Magic is a WordPress ambassador from Buddy. Uh, who's passionate about all things related to web development, and he's a fellow cyclist, um, and he's from Poland. And he will bring us a session, Static WordPress, how to make WordPress faster and more secure. Hi, my name is Maciek Pamowski, and today I am going to show you how to make your WordPress much faster and much more secure, thanks to a really simple trick. Um, few words about me. I work at the Polish company called Body, where every day we try to create one of the easiest to use CI CD applications out there. Apart from this, I am a WordPress uh, core contributor and a cyclist. Okay, so enough about me because uh, I am not the point of the presentation. Let's talk about static WordPress. This is a website, a typical WordPress uh, that I created and that I managed. And this is the same website that was converted into static. As you see, there is no difference between them. I mean, almost no, di almost no difference because the average response time is quite different. The WordPress have the average response time of almost three milliseconds. I will talk a bit later about uh, how I did the testing and the static version response time was only 16 milliseconds. So as you see, the difference is just huge. Um, why? So first of all, we I have to explain what is the difference between the static and the dynamic website. First of all, this is how a typical dynamic request looks like. First, we type some URL into our browser. Then the request goes to our server. Uh, then the code is parsed. And at some point, um, our PHP code requests for data. The data is stored in our MySQL database. So the database uh, sends uh, data to the server, everything is parsed and uh, returned as HTML into the browser. This works, but it doesn't scale too good. That's why at some point, almost everyone starts using cache. Cache mm, makes a small difference in terms of how the request looks like, because when we ask for some web page for the first time, it looks exactly as on the previous slide. We enter the URL, it goes to the server, it goes to the database, but here is a small thing that is a bit different. Uh, apart from returning everything to the browser, uh, the website also cr creates a static HTML version of the request. So the next time someone asks for it, it can return the static HTML at once without asking, uh, without any additional parsing and asking uh, for, uh, for some data from the database. It makes it much faster, but we can still do it better. This is how the static request looks like because, uh, all the hard work uh, is done before even a uh, first request uh, come to the server. We have to convert our website in some way. There are many methods, I will talk about it uh, later. And when we have everything converted to HTML, we put everything on our server. Thanks to this, every time someone asks for any URL, we always um, send the static HTML back. This is perfect. Also, we don't have to worry about even having PHP on our server. 
our server can just have can be as simple as it can be and thanks to this it will be much much faster we don't need any database nothing um so when we know the difference let's start with what are the pros of converting to static first of all the obvious one speed uh why why is that like i mentioned before our server can be much faster because it's simpler there is no database there is no parsing like the server has to do just one thing serve the data the static html file to our browser uh, also it is so simple so the server setup is much easier it's much easier to maintain there are uh, less moving parts and because of that it will be faster uh, now time for some numbers mm, using uh, loader io uh, i run a test where i um, where five clients requested my website every second for 30 seconds um, before i show you the numbers let me just uh, point one thing i am using a very very cheap hosting i think it's the cheapest uh, hosting in poland that has uh, ssh access but it's enough for me uh, so wordpress without cache had this almost three seconds average response time this is really a horrible score wordpress with cache had a much better result of only 300 35 milliseconds average response this is much better and um, but still when we look at the static wordpress when we when our average response is 16 milliseconds there is really it's, it's really hard to compare uh, those numbers i mean the static wordpress it's so much faster but okay let's make it a bit harder let's run 50 clients every second for 30 seconds so uh, wordpress without cache just gave me 100 percent error rate it was just too much for it sorry wordpress without ca uh, with cache gave a 600 milliseconds average response which is better because it gave some response but it has had 30 percent error rate this is this shouldn't happen on a production website, sorry. And the static uh, WordPress give 12 millisecond average response time. It was working. I mean, um, many companies learned that static is, uh, is, is, is a really great way to handle uh, heavy traffic, especially during the COVID, when we started putting all the information on the websites and suddenly all of them went down and converting them into static solved the problem. But not only the speed is the reason why it's worth to convert to static. Another one is security. Thanks to the fact that our production server and, uh, and our WordPress are on separate, can be on separate uh, servers, we can, um, we can make, it, make it much harder to access by any other apart from us. We can even go uh, with a bit paranoid approach and we can have our WordPress only on our local host. We can build it and just send the, the HTML files to, uh, to production because why not? We can do it. And sometimes this is quite a reasonable approach, especially when we update our website like once per year. Uh, let's look at the typical attack vectors for WordPress. There is quite of them. We have a typical uh, attack vectors through core plugins and themes. Uh, someone can steal or hack our password to our FTP and SFTP. There are WP admin brute force attacks, malware, especially from some poor plugins or hacked plugins. Someone can uh, hack our DNS account and switch our website. There may be some error in PHP. And of course, someone can try the denial of service attack, uh, which will take our website down. And um, thanks to static, lots of those attack vectors are gone. 
there are only a few left. We have denial, the denial of service attack, which is possible on any website. But the good news, as I showed you before, the static website can handle a much bigger traffic. So there is a big chance that this denial of service attack uh, won't even give any any damage to to your website and no one in, will will even notice also there are cdns uh like cloudfare that that can make the denial of service attack uh like almost impossible uh, there there still will be the possibility of hacking to your ftp or sftp or dns account because this is more of a password problem rather than than cms problem but uh, as you see, because we removed all those moving parts, this is what I mentioned before, uh, we also removed a lot of attack vectors. And thanks to this, our website can be really, really safe. And also remember, our production website is separate from, the, uh, from, from, from our WordPress. And uh, even if someone would hack your WordPress, no one will see the result on production, which is also a, a really cool thing. Um, hosting costs. This is a really important thing, thing to me because uh, to be honest, I'm quite uh, cheap and um, I am using this, like I mentioned, the cheapest hosting in Poland with SSH. Um, so why is uh, hosting a static website uh, cheaper? First of all, first of all, because they're simpler. Um, for example, if you use um, if you use Kinsta, it's an amazing hosting. I really love, uh, love love their service, and they give you lots of extra tools for debugging, for tracking what is slowing your website down, for backups, for like everything. And this is amazing, but you have to pay for it. And uh, having your simple website that consists only of HTML hosted on like whatever you want makes it a lot simpler, a lot cheaper. You won't need all those tools. Sometimes it can even be free. You can use GitHub pages. You can use Netlify. There is big chance it will be really enough. And let's compare it with the typical WordPress hosting that uh, starts from 12 to 20 euros per month per site. I pay $7 for two websites per month. And um, so it's three, three and a half dollar per, per site. And uh, I'm really happy with, uh, with, with the overall speed. I have a really high score on, uh, on Google PageSpeed and my website is equally fast all over the world. Also, it gives us the peace of mind because uh, we removed so many things that can break. We don't have to worry that in the middle of the night, something will go wrong because uh, there is almost nothing that can go wrong. And this is a really nice thing to have. Also, when we would be using CDNs uh, like uh, Cloudflare that I mentioned before, uh, not only our website will be uh, equally fast all over the world, it will be protected from denial of service attacks and many, many more. So, uh, all those CDNs can give you so many uh, cool features. So it's really, uh, it's really worth to interest in one of those. And your website will just work. And I think this is one of the most important things that we want to have. But of course, uh, there are also cons of converting to static. First of all, sadly, not every site can be converted. Uh, if your website has user profiles, dynamic content, uh, and or it's just created by users, uh, it's almost impossible to get it converted into pure static. We can think about headless approach or something like this, but this is not the topic of this presentation. So if your website is very dynamic, sadly, it won't be static. Uh, second of all, some parts of your website will need some workarounds because uh, we removed all the PHPs, the databases and so on and so on. So we may have a problem with 
with uh, forms, with search, with comments or e-commerce. But the good news is there are a lot of third party tools that will sol solve this problem like in a few minutes. Uh, here I made a list uh, of some of them. We can use Kfaz or Bazin for forms. We can use Algolia for search. Really amazing. Am amazing search is much better than the typical WordPress search. For comments, you can use reply box or discuss, which there is a big chance you are already using. And even for e-commerce, you can use Snipcart or Commerce Layer. So you don't have to worry that uh, there is no way to fix this. You can do it. It will just require some workarounds. Also, the build process itself, it's something strange. First of all, you have to always remember about it because uh, normally you just press update or publish and your website was updated or published and that's all. And now after doing this, you have to remember to rebuild the website. Of course, uh, using some plugins or some tools may, it can automate it for you, uh, but it will really depend on the technology you are using. So uh, overall, you have to remember about it. Also, it takes some extra time. For example, the WPO's website I mentioned before, uh, it takes about two minutes to rebuild completely. So uh, from pressing the update button until the everything will, uh, until the moment uh, the updating content will be live, it can take a minute or two or even more. It depends how big is your website. Also, it's quite possible that uh, there will be too long build times because Builds will take more time when there is a lot of posts and it will increase with every new post. Of course, there are many technological stacks we can use uh, to fight with this problem. And it's, uh, and it's really possible to convert like thousands of posts in, in a minute. Uh, but sometimes it requires some extra development work and uh, and some thinking before converting into static, especially in, in in choosing the right technology. And that's why now it's time to show you what are the ways to go static. There are three main approaches. Um, first of all, using a WordPress plugin because we are using WordPress. So of course there is a plugin for this. We can use either WP to static or static HTML output or simply static. There are probably a few more of them, but uh, those are the most popular ones and they're really working nicely. It's a really good thing to use WP CLI because, because using it, you will be sure that you won't have a problem with uh, with any timeouts or something like this. And that's why it's also a good thing to use some CI CD tool like Buddy, like GitHub Actions, like Travis, whatever. There, uh, there is a lot of tools like this. But thanks to this, you can orchestrate and automate the whole the whole process. And um, also most of those CI CD tools have has some API so it's easy to connect um, to connect it with uh, the update button. So every time you will press the update button, the whole process will start. Um, first of all, this is um, this this way to convert to static. It's it's cheap because all of the technologies uh, I mentioned before are either free or uh, at least they have a free tier, it's especially, uh, especially it's important with the CI CD. Uh, you have the full control over the whole process. For me, it's one of the most important thing because I really love to know what is happening um, during the process. Because thanks to this, I can tweak it and change it and make it better, faster. Uh, Many plugins will be compatible out of the box, but some will be not, sadly. I mean, all the plugins that will just update the content in some way, they will work out of the box. Uh, the plugins that will add some dynamic features probably won't. So uh, 
this is why you will have to play around a bit with uh, with this to check is this approach uh, right for you. And another way is using the static side generators like Gatsby, like Grid, some Hugo, and many, many more. I mean, uh, in the JavaScript world, world, I think there is uh, one more static side generator that is created each day. So you really will have to uh, pick the best technology that will suit you. Uh, then you will need an API. You can use either the WP REST API or you can use the GraphQL API. It's um, It depends on which static site generator will you use. And of course, like I mentioned before, it's a good way to connect it with CI CD because it will help you orchestrate everything. And this approach is also cheap because uh, all the static site generators are free. Uh, the fun part is that you can use other programming languages apart from PHP. So if you prefer React or just you hate PHP, uh, this is the way to go for you. Uh, <clears throat> it's a bit more problematic in terms of plugin compatibility, but this is really changing. And uh, I mean, every major plugin right now has at least a REST API endpoint and more and more of them are having GraphQL endpoints. So in some time, it will probably be, the compatibility be at the same level as with plugins. And of course you can use a service like Stradic, like Shifter or Flight Sites. Um, this is the approach when you have um, a bit more money you don't care about the control of the process because the magic happens. You press some buttons, something happen, something happens under the hood, and in the result, you get a working website. And uh, I must say that when I was playing around with Stratic, I was amazed how quickly I was able to migrate the website there, and everything just worked like that. I don't know how because, like I said, magic happened under the hood but it was working. So uh, if you have uh, money, you don't have time or you don't have knowledge and you don't want to learn it because you don't have to, uh, this is the way to go. Also, uh, some additional plugins integrations are out of the box with some services. For example, Stratic has um, already integrations with contact, contact form, with, uh, with search and uh, and from what I know, their list is growing uh, every, every, every week. So uh, it's really uh, important to check what you need and pick the service that will suit your needs. So is it worth it? We all work in IT, so you probably know the answer. It depends, of course. So. If your website is, isn't dynamic, you don't have any logins or registration features, and it's more of a reading page. So it's a blog, a business page, or a portfolio. And you aren't focused or adding a new post every second, because in this case, uh, the build times may be uh, quite a problem for you. So if, if, if all of those go for it, static is much cheaper, much faster, much more secure, and you just don't have to worry about anything. When you will put it on the server, it will just work. And that's all. Uh, in any other cases, you either have to stay with, uh, with the classic WordPress, or you may think about the headless approach. And uh, let me show you a real life example, uh, how I am personally using uh, static. And uh, this is this WPOs I mentioned a few times before. I'm converting it to static because as you saw, my my hosting just couldn't handle it normally. And the service structure is one server which SSH access. Uh, there is a WordPress under a subdomain and the static is under the top level domain. Also, I'm using CloudFlare to have it 
fast all over the world. So, and of course, not to worry about any denial of service attacks and so on and so on. Uh, the configuration of WP2 static, I just, I'm excluding the URLs I don't need. For example, I don't use categories, I don't use tags, so those URLs are gone. Uh, I'm also excluding the whole WP content uploads folder because I'm moving them manually. And then I use body to automate it. As you see, first I run the WP static, so all the building uh, now uh, goes in the background. After this, I run some server operations like moving uh, the WP content uploads to the um, to the static version. Then I fix the HD the HD access, and in the end, I purge the cache on Cloudflare. And overall, the 200 pages takes about one or two minutes, so it's it's quite a good time, especially that like I mentioned a few times before my hosting is really really poor uh, if you'd like to play around with um, converting your website into static uh, we have a nice guide on uh, bodyworks and um, it may help you to start uh, playing uh, with with static and if you have any questions you can reach me out on twitter this is my handle or you can send me an email and I will try to respond as fast as possible. So that's all. I hope I convinced you to at least try uh, converting your website to static. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Magic. That was awesome. Um, and we have a few questions from the audience. Um, let me find the first one. Okay, Juan Roland has asked, um, how do we convert it? Uh, for example, my website is full of, uh, it's full Elementor made, what do I do? Uh, I mentioned this during uh, my presentation. There are those three ways. Uh, I think that uh, in case you are using Elementor, uh, it would be best to either use uh, the plugin like WP Static because it will just um, go around your website page by page and convert every every page to HTML, or just use a service like, uh, like Stratic or Flat Sites because they will do the same, but uh, but it will be easier for, for you. I mean, you just have to pay them money for magic to happen, and that's all. <laughs> but uh, it should work out of the box. Okay. Um, our next question is uh, from Felipe Mota asked, um, websites, uh, Paid, was it paid third party themes with WP Bakery page builder can be converted to static with no issues. And I think this also goes to any other type. Builder. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is, this is the, the same case. Uh, it should work because uh, we are just going page by page, saving this as, as HTML and that's all. The only, tr uh, the only thing that can go wrong if the website is uh, using uh, Ajax heavily because uh, then it would need some uh, custom development to uh, to move this part and um, it then it becomes less of a static approach than uh, you will start of thinking about some decoupled or headless approach that you will need some dynamic source but overall I think it should work out of the box I mean uh, either static or WP to static you can try them for free uh just just run it and see if it works awesome um we have a couple of questions from joe um the first one is uh what's the biggest blocker for companies already using wordpress to make the switch to static wordpress uh, i think uh, that the biggest blocker is they that many companies don't even want to try because uh, this is one of this explanation we don't have time to do something because we are fixing that the site is down because of a lot of traffic and it could be fixed just by spending some time and figuring out uh, how to make it working in the first place and i think this is uh, this is one of the reasons and the second reason is um Many people think about static as something old that we used at the beginning of our careers. I mean, uh, 
I started my career writing static uh, websites same. in Notepad. So, and probably same. many of us uh, did the same too. The next level was going uh, a step further and writing dynamic code using CMSs. And we felt like going uh, back to static is a step uh, backward. Even that caching is almost the same as static, but in, in a bit different way. So I think uh, those are the the two the, the two main things either thinking this is something old and that we shouldn't use it anymore or the fact that uh, we just try not to do this <laughs> on purpose yeah and we have uh, one more question from joe it's actually very interesting uh what is an impact that is often missed when planning for static wordpress is it uh, development cost security learning curve company adoption or any others uh, I think that uh, it will also really depend on the website, on the website, on the team that is using it, uh, because uh, the security part should be fixed by static, so we shouldn't worry about this. But uh, the learning curve for users may be something uh, that may be problematic, because we we have to remember that uh, we are developers and okay, we create some cool stuff, but we quite often don't think about the users who will use uh, the website, but I mean the backend. For example, in most cases, when we start using static, we have to add one more button to convert to static. Mm -hmm. It's something simple for us. It's just, just one more button. <coughs> It shouldn't be a problem, but it may be a big problem for sometimes for users because it changes their flow. They were used to doing something in one way, and then the developers came and decided let's now do it in in another way. So, uh, so, so this is this this is also something that may be a problem. Um, and of course, uh, when we start uh, converting our uh, site to to static, then we will learn how many things there are dynamic, and it may be a bit problematic to convert it out of the box. Uh, for example, uh, it took me a year uh, and uh, small help from from from, from Greg Zhukowski, uh, because he saw that uh, when he pasted the link from WP Owls, uh one thing doesn't uh, show uh, it was about it's not 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 the og tags that about o embed technology mm -hmm. because o embed is uh, this is based in a way in how the rest api in wordpress works so it some part is passed through the parameter and we can't convert it to static we would have to have it dynamic in some way to ask the website. So this is a small thing. I didn't even saw it because everything I thought was working. And uh, I needed one one Greg Zhukowski to see, OK, but this is not working. And my site was very simple. Uh, with more and more complicated websites, you will probably learn that there are many other small things like this. So probably converting uh, your website to static it won't be something okay let's convert it i want to have it working uh, i don't know by tomorrow no it it won't work like this you will probably need some more time you will need some testing uh but the overall results in the long run uh will really really surprise uh, surprise you and uh, they will cut a lot of your a lot of costs and uh mm -hmm especially on hosting, because mm -hmm. serving HTML is really cheap. Yeah, I, I know you use it personally for an old website I had. I didn't want to maintain it anymore. I wanted to be there, but I didn't want to have to update WordPress, so I converted it. So, yeah. Exactly. Also, you, you, you mentioned uh, one more interesting case, like legacy mm -hmm. websites that we want to have somewhere in the internet, but we don't want to do mm -hmm. anything about them. So there is no better way than convert them to static put them on the uh, on, on the server and that's all and be hacked <laughs> exactly <laughs> anyway so um thank you so much for those really really interesting and thank you thank for you for questions you. i mean i mean listening to myself was something uh, something <laughs> weird but i must say i think i did quite a 
quite a good job. I, I think you did. It was, uh, it was really, that's really, really nice to hear. Really nice to hear. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. And, and thank you all for attending this session with Jacob and myself. Uh, you can continue the conversation on Slack. We have a link on the Set Work and Planet Creator homepage. Um, and don't forget to attend the next talk, which is WP REST API and Web Components 200% Internet with Craig West. And that's in 10 a.m. here on the same channel. And we'll see you right after the break. <laughs>